I call the October 28th, 2019 meeting of the Huron Board of Education to order. I would ask Mr. Christofferson to note the roll call and ask everybody to please rise as I lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we had some new updated agendas placed in front of us tonight. We have some additional new hires, some additional resignations on the agenda. So I would ask for a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of adoption, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The agenda is adopted. Uh, moving into dates to remember, November 6th is an early release date. November 11th is a Veterans Day holiday. There's no school on that day. November 12th, that will be the next school board meeting at 5.30 p.m. here in the IPC. That is a Tuesday meeting. And there are some additional dates to remember on the agenda on the website if you wish to see them. Um, item six, community input for items not on the agenda. Is there anybody here with community input for items not on the agenda? Seeing nobody come forward. Uh, item seven is conflict disclosures and consideration of waivers. We have none of those. Item eight, consent agenda. Superintendent of schools recommends approval of the following. A, board approval of new hires. As was mentioned previously, classified personnel, substitute teachers, classroom aides, and volunteers must be approved in order to be covered by a workers' compensation plan. Cheryl Krutzfeldt as a volunteer. Melody Witty Trowbridge as a TAP SPED support. Jordan Ziedker as a SPED paraeducator. Daniel Schumacher as a volunteer for DI. Ashley Dahl as a volunteer for DI. Callie Wachter as a volunteer for DI. Cindy Allman as a substitute teacher and a substitute paraeducator. Shana Du Bois as a substitute teacher and a substitute paraeducator, and Karen Zimmerman, a paraeducator at the Madison 2-3 Center. We have no contracts for board approval. We have two resignations for board approval, Dean Lindstad, substitute bus driver, and Karen Zimmerman, food service with two months service. Uh, D is consideration and approval of bills. See the attached list. E, we have a request for open en approval of open enrollment requests. Administration has received open <coughs> enrollment requests OE 2019-9 and OE 2019-10 for board approval. F, we have uh, one, no, we have two grants here, intent to apply for grant funding through the transportation department. Um, that is a school bus rebate grant in the approximate amount of $45,000. And G is another grant uh, for the HHS Special Education Department, a Walmart grant. Um, so that's going to be for up to $4,500. Uh, the consent, consent agenda may be approved with one motion. However, if a board member wishes to separate an item for discussion, he or she may do so. Move approval of the consent agenda as presented. We have a motion for approval of the consent agenda and a second. Um, all, any discussion on consent? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent is approved. I will turn it over to Mr. Nebelsek now as he celebrates successes in the district. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, at the risk we're going to miss something, I'll be keeping track and perhaps adding some at the next meeting. But these are several of the things that uh, we have to mention tonight. Congratulations to the drama department on their uh, performance of Ghost Chasers on Friday and Saturday night, even after a long day working cross country. Diane and I thoroughly enjoyed the show on Saturday evening, so congratulations to Molly Perry and her staff and students on a, on a great show. The other thing, if uh, any of you happen to see it, but thank you to all of you and to the taxpayers for what they can now do with the lighting and the audio in the auditorium and with all the digital lights and, and creating the different scenes. It was really incredible to watch all of that. So very grateful 
for the work that you've all done in that direction. I want to congratulate the football team on the first home playoff game in 20 years this next uh, weekend, or excuse me, this next Thursday night, October 31. Uh, we earned number three seed in the playoffs, and uh, so we will be entertaining Yankton at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening. Congratulations to our cheer and dance teams as they uh, finish the state finals with dance being fourth in the state of South Dakota and cheer being 10th. Uh, congratulations to uh, Jamie Kettner and Haley Bixler for all state in cheer, and to Haley Bixler and Chloe Flolo for all state in dance. Uh, congratulations to the 2019 boys all ESD soccer team. Botkin was a senior, Eduardo Trulio. Cordova is a junior, Carson Duba is a senior, and Waniso is a senior. Congratulations to the 2019 Academic All-State Soccer Team, including Angela Poke, a senior, Tegan Evers, a senior, A. A. Way, a senior, and Apo, a senior. Um, also, congratulations to the uh, cross-country teams, our one uh, varsity uh, runner, Will Radke, and then led a group that had not run varsity until this last weekend. And uh, congratulations to Will on uh, representing us all through the year with varsity cross country ending out here at the state meet. Speaking of the state meet, I want to thank everyone who worked the state cross country meet on Saturday. Your professionalism, attention to detail, and courtesy made the event a huge success. I know that we sold over 3,500 tickets. I know that with the runners, that meant that 4,000 to 5,000 people were all on the facility at the same time and to coordinate parking and runners and times and schedules and facilities and toiletries and food. It's an unbelievable undertaking and a lot of people and so very proud of the Huron School District and the Huron community coming together to uh, pull that off. Thank you to Sarah May of Modern Woodman for providing Washington 4-5, Madison 2-3 and the Buchanan K-1. Uh, lunch in connection with Hometown Hero Program. It was delicious and appreciated. Thank you to the South Dakota Community Foundation for the generous grant in the amount of $5,000 to the Huron Public School District's Stop the Bleed Program. Thank you to BCNU for their generous donation to the purchase school supplies for the Buchanan K-1 Center. And thank you to everyone, and I already thank people for the uh, cross country. I've got several other things that are along the lines of a superintendent's report, which I'll visit with you about shortly. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Nebelsek. Uh, moving into reports to the board, our first report is Classified Employee of the Month, presented by Ms. Wilmson. And Mrs. Hink. And Mrs. Hink. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here tonight with you to honor our uh, middle school employee of the month, Jill Hens. Um, we are very fortunate to have her in our building working with our students. Um, I'd like to read a few words that her supervising teachers and colleagues said about her. Um, she is able to work with students at any grade level and any subject matter. She's always willing to cover classrooms when teachers need her. Um, she is um, able to help with any task and always willing to help all of the students that need assistance. Um, they also said they really appreciate that she has been a great support and again very thankful to have her in the building. And she is our morning greeter every morning. <laughs> every student that comes in the front door gets said good morning to by Mrs. Hens. I know they appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for thank, you yep. oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you all of you. Thank you. No, no, stay for the picture. That's the most. This one. This one. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. All right, our next report is the superintendent's report. Mr. Nevelsek. Okay, we're back at it. I have several small things to talk about. First off, I would like to continue to encourage people who might be interested in substitute teaching to look into it. 
when we have uh, many activities going on and then just the sheer numbers of uh, teachers and you're dealing with health and, and their own child care and those types of things, uh, we need people to, con to uh, continue to consider being on the substitute teacher list. It's, a, it's an issue where we have a huge need some days and less other days and so it wouldn't be something where people would necessarily be committing long term. So I wanted to include that. I want you to know that behind the scenes we're looking at the possibility of bringing you a uh, different way of uh, compensating substitute nurses. There uh, seems to be some information that we're putting together that says that when a nurse is gone there's a concentrated amount of time in which care needs to be provided and they may be able to find subs for that if they didn't have to be there the whole day. So what we're trying to put together is a program that may compensate on an hourly basis for that specific amount of professional time, but saves us money compared to what it would cost us if they were there for the whole day. And so it could be a win-win and we're doing the research and that would have to come to you for approval if uh, we did that. I want to remind you, because I think you've all received information, that on Monday, December 2nd, we will have a school board meeting um, in the um, conference room at the Madison 2-3 Center. And at that time, all three legislators will be there. Uh, Mrs. Waylander, because of the special ed issues, will be there. Mr. Christofferson and I um, will have it so that board members and legislators can tour the building before lunch starts at 11.30, so prior to 11.30 or after 1 o'clock uh, when we finish. And if it's all right that day, I'd like to have the um, agenda review with the officers follow that meeting while we're already at Madison. We'll have several documents prepared uh, for that. One of them will be a position paper that was drafted last uh, Wednesday and Thursday when I led the large schools group out in Chamberlain and I'll be prepared to go through that paper with the board and the administrators. I think by then, uh, Garrett, you and those who represent us at Delegate Assembly should be able to have the position paper of ASBSD, and I'll also have available the SASD position paper. Those are a uh, connection of work which hopefully we can show how they're interwoven between the three agencies, and then most important work we do that day is Mr. Christofferson puts together a profile of who our district is and our legislators thank him for that every year so that they go fully prepared in what does it look like, uh, what are we all about, how does our enrollment work, how does our funding work, that, uh, that type of thing. I'm on a committee that meets again next, or excuse me, this Thursday and uh, it's a committee of uh, of SASD people that are superintendents and SASD officers along with the officers of the Associated School Board, so it's board members, and working on a couple of critical issues and the main one that's connecting traction is the capital outlay issue, that long range what would be a possible fix to what will be a systematic reduction of capital outlay until no one over the course of years can take care of their infrastructure. So. What do we need to do long range? And then where I think we're really getting traction with state officials is I, coming up with a, with a uh, defendable way to identify the outliers. Those that do not have enough per student on the one end, uh, which is a couple of the larger schools, and those who have so few students that $2,800 per student does not produce enough for a roof or a, or a boiler or whatever. So we're trying to come up with, as three organizations, how to, how to come up with a remedy for the outliers that cannot function under the current um, current rules. Uh, so that, that work is coming up and um, a big thing, that, oh, I wanted to update our enrollment which just signed documents again today. Mr. Christofferson works tireless on that now for a month but our enrollment as of today is uh, 2,816.66 students and uh, we are sending a projection for next year of a growth of 100 and we think that's conservative considering the child count of births and the economic development that is going on. We're on a countdown to a week from Wednesday is the on-site visit for state accreditation. We're on the phone today with uh, people who will be coming out to that and uh, the cabinet spends a lot of time um, uploading uh, information that they can study 
ahead of time and we're trying to look at what are the critical components that they want us uh, to be prepared at. It appears that making sure that our uh, courses align with our um, state standards and uh, how those are covered and so uh, Mrs. Peets has been putting a lot of that information in and we're working really hard on what is uh, unique across the state and that is, is how do we how do we describe the rescue programs that we have for kids that fall behind in credit and how are they aligned and how does it look in other schools compared to how it looks in ours so we're all working on that and so that state accreditation is uh, next week on November 6th is the on-site and then there will be a report that comes out after that which will become a document that we'll share with the school board in uh, the weeks to come and then finally wanted to let you know that we don't know exactly the timetable for this but we're in the process I'm supporting uh, Mr. Radke on the process of uh, researching and coming up with a, a a behavior assessment instrument there's been some work done across the nation on behavior assessment instruments which are uh, research based as to what behaviors uh, um, over the course of time have become a a nuisance or a um, misbehavior by a student and what behaviors are triggers that there's an actual threat and the more that we learn we're able to learn that there is a connection between certain behaviors and a threat and so a lot of this work comes out of South Carolina there are other schools in South Dakota large schools that are looking at this and so um, I'll be keeping you informed but we we look like we're going to uh, try to pilot a way that we can use a research-based assessment form to determine if we're dealing with mischief or if we're dealing with some type of threat and then need to have a heightened awareness and so that's that's uh, uh, something that's coming across the nation any information that we can have through research in order to keep people safe is is I hope well received by the community unless you have questions that's my report thank you mr. noble sex anybody have any questions I had one quick question. Enrollment last year, do you remember the number of what student enrollment was last year? I want to say we're up 140, Kelly. 2760, roughly last year. Right? 2735, yeah. 20, when we were budgeted for 2760. So. 2735, so right. up about 80. 2635. Oh, 2635. Yeah. Okay. So we're up quite a bit. Right, so 2635 means we're. We're up 175 to 180 kids, which is the most significant one-year growth mm -hmm. during the entire time since we turned it around from 2007 to now. So that's that's great, very significant. Great. What were we at on count day last month? Excuse me. What were we at on count day last month? Was it like 2815? We just up one today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mr. Nobleson. You bet. All right, moving on, old business. We have no items for old business. Uh, moving into new business, we have one item, considering the awarding of the middle school and the high school improvement bids. Uh, Mr. Christofferson has some <coughs> comments on this. Okay, so this is our, was the main focus of the capital outlay money that was borrowed last uh, spring for these projects. Uh, we borrowed $6.6 .6 million and we had the whole laundry list of things we wanted to do. This was the big one. This puts a secure entrance on the front of the high school and bumps the front of the high school out a little bit, moves counselors and conference rooms to that area to free up space in other part of the high school. It will eventually be teacher work rooms that will increase the capacity of the high school from its current 750 to a thousand students because unless teachers are teaching their class they would be in the work area and then the classrooms would be used a lot of the classrooms would be used all periods of the day that's how we go from 750 in the high school to a thousand that's on the horizon the other part of the project is to put a secure entrance on the middle school and uh, reconfigure that office a little bit um, touch up some other areas in the middle school, some of the locker rooms and bathrooms. The high school is also getting all the bathrooms looked at, um, and then the vocational building bathrooms. So we've talked about that several times. This was the bid. The uh, architect estimated back in March 
that this project would be to budget $4 million for this project. In that $4 million budget, we had an inflation increase of 3% to get to now from March. We had a construction reserve of 5%, and we had a contingency funds of 15%. So basically, it was pat everything was padded 23%. So we missed that budget when we opened the bids. We had four bids ranging from, for a base bids, we had 4,349,000 was our low bid for Mills Construction in Brookings. Pitts Construction in Mitchell's base bid was 4,794,000. Jan's Corp in Sioux Falls was 4,939,000 and Kyber's Carlson from Aberdeen was 5,197,000. So you see we had an eight to $900,000 variance in our base bids. <clears throat> we also had some alternates. One was to have a complete sidewalk replacement in front of the high school to give it um, much better curb appeal when this thing's done. That's uh, about $34,000 item a lot more ceiling replacement of ceiling tile, 29,000, some upgraded rooftop units that would more closely mirror what we have now. The base bid had some different kind of rooftop units that had electric reheat in it and had a lot of added duct work um, to try and save money, but um, we would recommend sticking with rooftop units that will fit on the existing curbs on the rooftops and uh, run exclusively on natural gas instead of electricity and not require all that duct work throughout the building. And alternate number four was some sinks that I wasn't even aware of. That wasn't in the planning at all. It was something that popped up during a pre-bid meeting and the architects put it in there. Basically it was $30,900 for six new sinks and some gas turrets in a science room that uh, they didn't recommend we do for that much money. That's why that wasn't included. <clears throat> so that kind of explains what we were looking at. The total with taking the three alternates brings the total to $4,520,400. <clears throat> Of the capital outlay certificate money that we had on hand, I had set aside $4,400,000 for this project. So I took the 23% padded number and I saved back another 10% and it still was not enough. Um, we have completed several other projects with that money that have come in under budget of 130000 so we still have $4,530,000 on hand to address this project. Um, that might seem like everything's fine because we have just an equal amount of money to what the bid came in at, but that doesn't give us any money to handle any um, changes to the contract or unforeseen conditions that are going to come up because we've been through this enough to know they are going to come up. It's a 1967 building. It has a lot of hidden, you might say, conditions that the contractors and architects won't actually see until we tear into it. <clears throat> so we've got to come up with some money to cover our contingencies, and uh, I will do so with the 2020-2021 capital outlay budget. I, I will, my stated goal will be to come up with $500,000 out of that budget so that we can cover anything that comes up and make it through these projects. Thank you, Mr. Christofferson. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions for him? Does anybody have any, any action they'd like mm -hmm. to take on this item? I would move that we accept the uh, bid from Mills Construction out of Brookings. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bid from Mills Construction. Is there any further discussion on this item? I would say it's 
always frustrating that in my experience as a board member that every time we get an estimate, the bids always come in so much higher than uh, than, than the estimate, and it's and even when you're adding ten percent, I mean you're trying to to pad it, and we still cannot mm -hmm. get there. I mean I don't know if just the if it's the uh, you know if they if the uh, industry knows the game and plays it well enough or what, but it just seems every time since we've been doing this, this happens. So uh, it's a little frustrating, but we're going to cross our fingers and hope we have less than ten thousand dollars in change orders. I mean that's good luck, but uh, so. Uh, but I mean, I guess we have it now. And we have to move forward. Is there? I mean, I assume we. I mean, we have this four million dollars sitting in our account. I don't know how long it's going to sit there before we start paying out of it. Is there any chance that I can make any interest? I mean, it's four million dollars sitting in an account somewhere. Yes, it's making interest. It has been ever since we've. Okay. Since we borrowed the money, it was placed in the bank with all our other money, and it has been making the same interest rate. Okay. At the bank, it's all our other money. So we have something at least, maybe a little extra to <laughs> pay off a couple extra change orders. But uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other comments or discussion? My, my only comment is that history's shown any time we've gone back and rebid, it's punitive. Yeah. It never comes the other direction because the people know the base, so the next time it's going to come in above the base. So we're really left with what else can we cut out in order to have contingency and or, I hope it never gets there, and or coming to you and and uh, with a cash flow issue as far as um, borrowing because I'm, I'm just looking at my own household expenses. We don't want this to get away from us and and uh, have things that are locked in at this bid become much higher because we can't accept them. So I think the most prudent thing to do as uh, for taxpayers is this is as low as it's going to get. If we're committed to getting the schools ready, we better move forward. Well, I think it'll certainly be a nice project when we're done. It'll add some security to the high school and the middle school and get everything the way it needs to be. So, uh, Any further discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of approving the, the bid from Mills Construction, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It is approved. The final item for tonight is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a motion in a second. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.